is Canes All Access. I'm your host, Cameron Dobbs, and today we are doing all Canes football. Now, that is both sides of the sport, both American football and soccer. And today, kicking us off, first and foremost, we got Julia Edwards and Hannah Dobarn in studio with us from Canes Soccer. Ladies, welcome to the show. Thank you. We are so pumped to have you. You're already in sync, which shows something good because we're going to have some fun on today's episode. In fact, Hannah, last season, you did a little bit. You tested out your acting skills on Kane Soccer's Instagram, and our real followers know this, but you did a little biscuits with the boss feature. Hmm. Hen, where did you get these? I'll start bringing them every morning. We'll call it biscuits with the boss. And this, of course, is a tradition stemming from the show Ted Lasso. You guys are big fans of Ted Lasso, huh? Yeah. Well, I am too. So we're going to have some fun today, and we're going to play some trivia based on Ted Lasso. Y'all ready? Okay. Hope so. <laughs> I hope so too. All right. Well, you're competing together. You're not competing individually. So we're going to kick it off. It's pretty easy trivia, but we'll test to see. Um, I know you got some skills on the soccer field, but we'll see how much you know about Ted Lasso today. First question here. What does Ted first think tea tastes like? Is it poison, mud, hot brown water, or coffee made from sticks? I think it's hot brown water. Yeah. You are correct. Hot brown water it is. <laughs> All right, one for one. Moving on, next question here. Would Jamie rather be a lion or a panda? A lion. A lion. Easy answer, huh? Easy. Yeah? I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Boldly stated there because you are correct. Next yeah. question. Why is Higgins... First name, Leslie. Is it, he was named after his father. He's a feminine junior. It's short for Lester, or his parents simply liked the name. Uh, he's named after his father. I think you're right. I think. I don't father? Know. Sure. I'm not sure to be sure. honest, but. Yeah, yeah. You are incorrect. That is uh, your first miss here. He's actually a feminine junior, believe really? it or not. Whoa. That is the correct answer, okay. yes. So named after his uh, mother. Next question, what is the name of the man Rebecca met in Amsterdam? Is it A, he never told her, B, John, C, Robert, or D, Rupert? It's not Rupert. I think it's he never told her. Is Teamwork he makes the dream work, you're correct. He <laughs> okay. never told her. <laughs> okay. All right, another one here. Who is Sam's restaurant named after? Is it his brother, his dad, a teammate, or no one? Oh, I know the name. What is it? It's it's Ola's. But wait, can you say the, is yes. it the options again? Is it his brother, his dad, a teammate, or no one? I think it's his dad. Because remember, so he brought too. his dad there. Yeah. I think it's his dad. That's some good memory, because you're correct once okay. again. We got some good <laughs> Ted Lasso crazy. fans in the house. All right, what is Coach Beard's first name? Oh. Is it Brendan, <laughs> Theodore, Lacey, or literally no one knows? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, so. No one knows? I don't, uh, sure, let's go with that. I don't know either, so okay. that is correct. Okay. Literally, no one knows. <laughs> Your next question, who is Ted's alter ego? This is one of my favorites. Is it Led Tasso, Ed Tassel, Teddy Lassonian, or Tess Lado? It's Led Tasso. I think it's so. <laughs> It's most definitely yeah. Led Tasso. <laughs> Moving on, you girls are killing this. Finish this sentence for me. Trent Krim. Independent. The Independent. That's our journalist <laughs> on the show. Next up, what was Van Damme's previous name? Monchlor, Zero, Bumbercatch, or that's always been his name? Zero. Yeah, yeah. Zero is correct. Y'all are killing this. What was not one of the names of the options for Richmond's new mascot? Was it not Tina Fayhound, Macy Greyhound, Doris Dayhound? Oh, that's a <laughs> tough, tough one, one here. <laughs> um, uh, I'll read them one more time okay. for you. Tina Fayhound, Macy Greyhound, or Doris Dayhound? You guess. Just come on. Just guess <laughs> Tina Fayhound. Tina Fayhound was not correct. It was actually Doris <laughs> Dayhound was not one of the options. That's a tough one. That's a little twister there. All right. What's the name of May's pub? Is it Throne and Scepter, The Prince's Head, The Prince's Bed, 
or the crown and anchor? I literally went there this summer. No way! So, the prince's head. No, I don't think it is. Oh. I don't oh my God. <laughs> Wait, take that back to you. All right, second wait. chance here. Second chance, we'll give Grace. Wait, can you wait, wait. I'll give you the question or the answers once again. <laughs> is it throne and scepter, the prince's head, the prince's bed, or the crown and anchor? Is this like, is this in real life or in the show? I only have the question. Okay, so probably in the show. <laughs> I thought it was the prince. I think it's the last one. The crown and anchor. But you've been there, well, so we can go I with. I think it was that one there. Okay. Final <laughs> answer. Three. Crown and anchor. Two. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Crown and anchor is correct. Oh. <laughs> Good oh job coming in flesh there. Now let's. We got to talk about that though. How was that experience going there? It was so fun. Did it feel like it was actually the show? Yeah, like you know the scene with the green, like the telephone box, the pub, and then they had this like um, Ted Lasso gift shop as well. So they had like pictures of him. They had the Richmond FC scarf. Oh in my the goodness! Club. It was so good. And <laughs> is this close to your home? Um, it's about like thirty minutes away. Okay, yeah, awesome. Because so you're hilarious. the only player from <laughs> England on your team, correct? Yeah. Yes, awesome. That's so cool. So we have not only fans of the show, but actually personal connections. <laughs> did was this pub? Did this exist before the show? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they just capitalized yeah. on it. Yeah. Amazing. All right got good business out of it. Oh my goodness, for sure. There are actually like quite a few tourists like looking around. I bet. The pub was really busy, so. How fun. I know. All right, you girls are doing a great <laughs> job here. A couple more questions. What are the names of the three guys who hang out in Maid's Pub? Going off of that one there, is it? <laughs> Pete, Terry, and Taz. Paul, Jeremy, and Baz. Tom, Jared, and Naz. Or Colin, Jerry, and Kaz. I'm pretty sure it's Baz. I'm, wait, what was the first option? Your first option was Pete, Terry, and Taz. Uh, Second was Paul, Jeremy, and Baz. I don't think there was a Jeremy, really? but I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I can't remember. I would go for the one with Baz. Okay, go for it. You are correct. <laughs> <laughs> Baz, Jeremy, and Paul, that is correct. All right, last question here about Ted Lasso. What instrument did Nate play? The viola? The violin, cello, or piano? Uh, violin or viola. I yeah, I don't. I don't really know the difference. <laughs> honestly. Um, or cello. <laughs> mm, uh, it was. It was. It was little. Violin? Okay. Yeah. Violin. Violin. Violin is correct. All right. You girls pretty did pretty well at that. I'd say all but what maybe one. one you got correct. Oh, yeah. Some true Ted Lasso fans and also some true soccer fans, of course. Now, you girls are both seniors. We already touched on that point. Julia, you're heading into the season. You're also team captain. So going in your senior season, you're a team captain for the team this year. What are your hopes to get out of this season? Um, I think we're just looking as a team to compete. I think, I mean, uh, we come into practice day in and day out, and we're working really hard, and everyone's looking really good. So I think for us, what we want to get out of the season is to make a deep run in both the ACC and in the NCAA tournament. I think that's our team goal, like ultimately. Amazing, and you're heading into ACC play this week, which yes, is super exciting. exciting. How yeah. does it feel to finally be there? So exciting. <laughs> We've worked so hard, and like the ACC is one of the best conferences in the country for college soccer, so it's really exciting to get to compete against some of the best. Amazing. And you've already competed with some of the best in preseason. Yes. So I'm definitely excited to see where you guys go this fall. Yes. And Hannah, though you are sidelined right now with an injury, you got your ACL recovering right now. I know your impact can still be made. So you may not, not be playing, but I know you can still play where your feet are and make an impact with your team. So how are you personally encouraging the team in this season for you, though you might not be on the field? Just trying to make sure that everyone knows I'm here for them, um, checking in on everyone, making sure that... Um, tactically like doing as much as I can with video and everything um, but yeah just trying to impact the team as much as I can beautiful well ladies thanks so much for hopping on the show best of luck in recovery and best of luck the rest of the season as well so much fun having you on and of course talking Ted Lasso yeah thank you so much yeah it was fun thank of you. course of course <laughs> And Kane fans, coming up next, we have Kane's football on the show. We're going to break down, taking down Texas A&M this past weekend. Stay tuned. Jaden Davis, welcome to Kane's All Access. How are you? Oh, I'm great, and I'm so great because we have a superstar in the show today. <laughs> I mean, we're all riding the high from the Texas A&M win, but you are also riding a couple personal highs. You're Miami Football's Defensive Player of the Week, 
And then you're also the ACC Defensive Back of the Week. How does that feel? I mean, it feels great, you know, being back in my hometown and being able to just give back like that. It just, it feels great, you know. My teammates, they, they've been loving me up all week, you know. So I'm just trying to, you know, do what's best for the team. Yeah, and you deserve all that love for sure. Big <laughs> win over the weekend. Walk me through this a little bit, okay? Let's break it down for us. What was that atmosphere like at Hard Rock on Saturday? Oh, crazy. I mean, I haven't been down here in a minute, you know. So uh, last time I heard it was like this is uh, 2017, I believe. Miami played Notre Dame. Uh, Trajan Bandy had an interception, and the, the stadium went crazy. So it was just like that's the only memory of the Hard Rock that I want to like have, you know. So now that I've seen what the Hard Rock could be, it's just like – now I want that like every week, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I love that you look back on that personal experience too, because you're transferring in now to Miami, played at Oklahoma, and you grew up in South Florida, knowing these memories at Hard Rock, and mm -hmm. now you're making these memories yourself at Hard Rock Stadium. Mm -hmm. Going more into this game now, you know, it was, it was a tight game. We were a little stressed yeah. watching. So I, I know you guys playing on the field were a little stressed too. Mm -hmm. But I also know you got some confidence in your canes. Yeah. And so throughout the game, was there ever a moment where you guys thought like Okay, it's tight, it's back and forth, but we got this. What was that moment for you? Um, I mean, for me personally, it was uh, after that, the fumble. After the fumble, I think it was third down, and we were up by five, I think. And then after that, once I realized, I didn't even know it was a fumble at first, you know? So <laughs> I didn't know it was a fumble until I heard everybody screaming. I don't know if you, but then we got the ball back, and I seen when they got the ball, I'm like, oh yeah, our offense is about to score. Once they scored and we looked at the scoreboard, it was like, oh, yeah, we got to finish this. We got it. So that was the moment for me where it, it felt like, yeah, we def we're we about to win this game. There's no way that they, they can win this game. So. And this was the fumble that you forced, of course, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You don't have to be too humble. It's okay. <laughs> I know you are, but we can brag on you a little bit here. Walk me through that play specifically. You kind of tackle him. Your helmet kind of hits the ball a little bit, forces it. Walk me through that play. I mean, we were in a uh, – coverage where I had to follow uh, the tight end they were in a tight set so um, I see my tight end block down and when he blocks down I'm supposed to replace off the edge and I, I kind of see the running back like through the creases of the um, of the offense alignment defense alignment I kind of seen him you know so I knew that I was gonna have to make a play it was just gonna be me and him so the first down was right there and as soon as I seen him I just shot it you know you can't in those moments you either gotta you, you can't there's no other decision you either wait and they get the first down or you shoot your shot and you make a play. So I, I shot my gun and uh, having, we ended up making a play. So uh, testament to the defensive line and making, making the ball spill like that all the way out to me. And then I, I would just made a, a routine play, you know. So. Yeah, good job by the whole team. Of course, Cam Kitchen's picking up that ball at the mm -hmm. end there, but you starting the force of the fumble. How many times have you watched that play back by now? I don't even know. It just, it, <laughs> <laughs> it always pops up on the timeline. I'm trying to like, <laughs> Like, hide it, you know? Like, <laughs> kind of, like, hide it. But every time I open my Instagram or Twitter, it's right there. I'm like, bro, who's <laughs> posting this? Like, Everyone's still <laughs> sharing it for yeah, you. I'm trying to, uh, you know, just focus on a new week. It's it's, it's exciting, you know? Uh, my my parents keep telling me, like, yeah, you got to be a little bit more, like, excited. Like, you got to be more happy. You made a great, great game. I'm like, yo, I'm not really that type of guy to, like, stick on one thing. So I'm trying to... Um, you know, get back to the next thing. I'm like, okay, next play. Everybody's like, do you know what she just did? I'm like, nah, not really. Like, <laughs> I'm just out there playing football, you know? I love it. Next thing, next play. And now we got a next game yeah. coming up. So we got yeah. Bethune Cookman at home once again, Hard Rock Stadium. Being in front of your fans one more time for the third week in a row, really exactly. third time in about 14 days or so, mm -hmm. it seems like. How excited are you to be back at Hard Rock Stadium this week? Man, just happiness. Uh, I'm loving it. You know, the fans were great on, on Saturday. They were amazing. And, and then just I've been seeing the love of, of the team, you know, when, like I, like I said before to the team, like when Miami's winning, the city's winning. The city's happy, you know. So, and, and as we continue to win and we continue to do what we have to do on the field, the city will continue to back us and that stadium will be full, you know. So I'm just – I'm excited to see uh, the fans show up at, at Hard Rock uh, on Thursday night and, and go out there and hopefully get a W. And going into this game, of course, we got that energy and excitement from the week before, but I know it's a new mindset, it's a new team. So what is, what is that mindset that Hurricanes football or even you yourself have going into this BC game? I mean, next game, you can't overlook any opponent or you got to treat every game like the same. I feel like the only reason that – we played great against Texas A&M is because we treated them just like we treated Miami, Ohio. 
we've played against Miami, Ohio, we treat them just like we treat Bethune Cookman. It's just we got to treat every game the same and have that same mentality, especially this week being a shorter week, you know, quicker turnaround. We had to put in more extra work. You had to put in more uh, time in the film room or more time on the film rather than less, you know. So I feel like that's that's the mindset of this team, you know. Our leader, uh, Cam, you know, he he's going to – He's gonna keep everything going. You know, he keeps us all all in line. And, and you know, we got a little bit, we got some different type of uh, personalities on the team. <laughs> you know, he's the guy that keeps everybody in line and keeps everybody on one accord. So that that being great, and uh, I feel like we're ready. And we're definitely ready to see you guys back on the field this week. So excited! Thanks again for hopping on to Canes All Access. Thank, thank you. I appreciate you. Oh, it was such a pleasure, Canes fans. That's all we have time today. Of course, covering Canes football soccer and football this week. Both teams are back here in Miami this week. Make sure you check them out. That's all the time we got. I'm Cameron Jobs. This is Canes All Access. Until next time, go Canes.